Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a classical intersection problem in physics where two runners are running in opposite directions with different velocities, and they're going to run on a football field. Let's say it's about 100 meters, and at some point, these two runners are going to meet, and we want to know when they meet. And what I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to solve it using velocities, not speed, uh, simply because I want you to be aware of how to use the signs when you calculate your velocities. It's a pretty simple problem and um, let's get started. Let's read this problem. It says two people start 100 meters apart. They begin to run at each other with different velocities until they meet at some point in the middle of the field. If runner A runs with a constant velocity of positive 15, so this is runner A with the red arrow here, and notice it's, it's, this arrow here is, is a little bit larger, so he's running to the right, and runner B runs with a constant velocity of negative 5 to the left, so this is runner B here. Notice the arrow is smaller, negative 5. Then where do they meet on the field? How long does it take them to meet? Sketch the acceleration versus time graph. Sketch the velocity versus time graph. And sketch the position versus time graph. Uh, because this is important, because when I say sketch, I'm not, I, I just want you to understand the basic shape of the, of the graphs, because you have to know these graphs. If you, if you can draw the graphs in, a, in any physics problem, you've won 90% of the battle. Because setting up a physics problem, you need to understand how the problem is set up. So you have to describe that. And what better way to describe what's going on than to understand the graph? So let's take a look at this. They're both running with a constant, constant velocity. But one of them is going to the right at 15, right? So one of them has a velocity here. And I'll draw on the, on the color here. This one has a velocity a here is going to the right at positive 15 meters per second, OK? This one's going to the left, so I give it a negative sign. Now again, there's another way to do this problem with speed and distance, but I'm emphasizing the signs on the velocities here, negative 5 meters per second, OK? So let's just emphasize that right now. The red one's going faster to the right. The blue one is going slower to the left. Now let me ask you a question. Where are they going to meet? Are they going to meet in the middle of the field? So let's just ask this question here. Where are they going to meet? So where are they going to meet? OK, where do you think that's going to happen? Is it going to be in the middle? What would have to happen for them to, be, to meet in the middle? OK, well, they would have to have the same equal and opposite magnitudes of their velocities, right? So definitely, this runner, the red runner, is going to end up on this side of the field when they meet, right? Because he has a faster velocity. If they both had 5 and 5, right, they would meet just right in the middle. But this one's going to overpower this one because he's going faster. And the other question we need to ask ourselves when we're solving these is what variables do they share? What variables do they share? When they meet, what are they going to share? Well, they're going to share the final position, wherever that is, and they're going to share the final time, OK? So the final position they're going to share, and they're going to share the final time. So that's important, just to keep that in our mind before we start solving. But first, I want to solve the acceleration versus time and velocity versus time graphs, because I think that's really important to tell the story of what's going on here. So I have some lines here. So let's take a look here. They're both running with a constant velocity. So um, both of these acceleration lines are really just going to be at 0. There's no, there's no change in those accelerations. They're both just running at a constant velocity, which means they have no acceleration whatsoever. OK, so that's an important first point to note. So those, that graph, the acceleration time graph, if I'm sketching it, right, is going to be flat, just a flat line for both of them, right? Because they're running at a constant speed. There's no acceleration whatsoever. OK, so what about the velocity time graphs? Are those both 0? Well, no, they're moving, right? And the, the, the runner A is moving three times the amount of runner B, right? So that we have a grid here. So what I'm going to do just to indicate that is I'm going to take this red line and I'm going to move it up here to the third hash mark here. And then our blue runner is running with a negative velocity. And he's running at basically one third of that rate to the other direction. So here's my positive. And again, you always have to define your axes. So again, when I say positive up here, let me just define something here. And we should always be doing this when we have a problem. I have a positive direction for my x, and I have a positive direction for my y. OK, so there's my positives. 
Okay, so that's important to define. So these are my axes on my graph, right? So this is positive acceleration, and this is positive time out here, right? Same thing here. Okay, so this is positive velocity here, and this is positive time. And we only we can only have positive time, right? We we don't have a time machine. We can't go back in time. So th this this all of these quadrants are really irrelevant in a physics problem because we don't go back in time. We don't have a time machine. You know, we know that this is our positive time axis out here, and this is our positive velocity axis here. So, red runner is running t with a positive velocity this way, blue runner is running this way. Now, what is the relationship of the velocity time graph in terms of the actual p uh, displacement covered? Okay, it's the area of the graph. Okay, so what does that mean for us? Well, if you took this graph, okay, say we paste this here, we took this graph, I'm going to make like a little box here so you can see it. We made it like a little box like this. I took this graph and I made this into like a little box, right? Well, what's the relationship here? Well, if I want to know the displacement or the you know the, the total displacement that this each runner runs, it's the area of this, okay? So let's just let's just actually let's just let's make them meet out here just so this is nice and even here. Okay, so the red box, what do you know about this area? If I was just counting boxes, I'm just doing this theoretically, right? Theoretically, if I just counted the boxes, I have one, two, three, four, five boxes this way, and three boxes this way. So it's five, and then I have three, so five and 15. So five and three is 15. So I got 15 in here, just more or less proportionately, right? But what about this one here? This one is going to be one, two, three, four, five. So this is simply going to be 5. So this travels 15 versus 5. So this travels three times as much in terms of distance as this one did. So definitely the red one's going to end up on this side of the field. The, the blue one's barely going to get going, right? Just by looking at the graph. Before I even do a calculation, I'm able to tell that. But the real story is going to be told with this position time graph. So let's copy this. And let's copy this. So what does this one look like? Let's start them both here at zero. What does this look like? Well, let's ask ourselves, where does the red runner start and where does the blue runner start? Well, the blue runner starts with a position at 100. The blue runner is going to start all the way at 100. So this blue runner is going to start, this blue runner down here on the position time graph is going to start with a position all the way at 100. So let's just say that that was 100 up there. And this red runner is going to start at 0, right? OK. Now, they're running at different rates, right? So the red runner is going to have a much steeper slope on this than the blue runner, right? So remember that the slope of the slope of the, of the position time graph is simply going to come from the, this, this velocity time graph, okay? So for example, the slope of this position time graph is going to be the slope of that, is, is going to be the velocity on this graph. So what is the velocity on the the blue runner here? Well, it's, it's, it's negative, right? So we would have a negative slope. But this one right here, let me make this a little bit higher so we can clarify this. Okay, and the red runner starts at starts at zero, right? But is the slope going to be higher on that one? It absolutely is, right? It's going to be higher by a factor of three. So in the same period that they run, this one's going to have a much higher slope, right? So one, two, three, much higher, three times higher, in fact, because the slope of this line is going to be noted by this velocity here. So this is three times the magnitude of this one, right? So the slope of this line is going to be three times as much. So in this, remember, what is slope? Let's just review for a second here. I'm going to have to do two parts in this video just because this video is getting long already. But the slope of this line, right, is what? What is the slope? It's the rise over the run, right? So let's understand what we're saying here. Over the, they have equal times, right? We said that they share the time here, right? So the rise of this red line is three times as much over the same run. This blue line, okay, is much shallower. Okay, so notice, let's just say that this was 100 here, when the position started at 100, and this one started at 0. 
these graphs here have to intersect where they meet because when they meet what do they share let's talk about we talked up here what do they share they share the final position and the final time so let's go back down to our graph what do we have here we have the final position here across so I'll draw it here with a dotted line so you can see it and we have the final time so that's important so again where they intersect I'm just gonna draw a dashed line here they have they share the final position right and what else do they share they're gonna share their final time right you see that right there so I'm able to clearly see from this graph move that time out of the way down there okay I'm able to clearly see from this graph that the point at which they intersect the point at which they meet on that field is gonna be they're gonna share that position because they're gonna shake hands at that point right and it took them the same amount of time to reach there so that's what this graph is gonna look like so now before I've even done a calculation I'm able to tell the story of what's happening in this picture okay the, the story is this they have no acceleration either one of them they're running at each other with constant velocities the red one is three times the amount of the blue one okay but the red one is to the right the blue one is to the left the blue one starts with a position of a hundred and the red one starts with a position of zero the slope of this velo of this position time graph is the velocity from this graph up here okay so what's gonna happen they're gonna start going towards each other but the red one's gonna increase at a rate that is three times as much as the blue one the blue ones decreasing at this rate that's one time as much when they meet they're gonna share this position here and they're gonna share this time here that's really important to go forward and solving this problem alright that's all I got right now for part one of this video look back to figure out the actual calculation of the final position and the final time that they meet in the field